Welcome back, Scarlet, for the final part of Chapter 12, The Mirror of Erised. The last reading was quite exciting, and I thought, with Harry nearly being caught by Filch and Snape, and finding uh, the mirror that showed him, where he's, showed him his mother and father. So, let's see what happens in the final part, shall we? What Harry feared most was that he might not be able to find the mirror room again. With Ron covered in the cloak too, they had to walk much more slowly next time. They tried retracing Harry's route from the library, wandering around the dark passages for nearly an hour. I'm freezing, said Ron. Let's forget it and go back. No, Harry hissed. I know it's here somewhere. They passed the ghost of a tall witch, gliding in the opposite direction, but saw no one else. Just as Ron started moaning that his feet were dead with cold, Harry spotted the suit of armour. It's here. Just here. Yes. They pushed the door open. Harry dropped the cloak from round his shoulders and ran to the mirror. They were there. His mother and father beamed at the sight of him. See, Harry whispered. I can't see anything. Look, look at them all. There are loads of them. I can only see you. Look in it properly. Go on, stand where I am. Harry stepped aside, but with Ron in front of the mirror, he couldn't see his family any more, just Ron in his paisley pyjamas. Ron, though, was staring transfected at his image. Look at me, he said. Can you see all your family standing around you? No, I'm alone, but I'm different. I look older, and I'm a head boy. What? I am. I'm wearing the badge like Bill used to, and I'm holding the house cup and the Quidditch cup. I'm Quidditch captain, too. Ron tore his eyes away from this splendid sight to look excitedly at Harry. Do you think this mirror shows the future? How can it? All my family are dead. Let me have another look. You had it to yourself all last night. You're, you're only holding the Quidditch Cup. What's interesting about that? I want to see my parents. Don't push me. A sudden noise outside in the corridor put an end to their discussion. They hadn't realised how loudly they'd been talking. Ron threw the cloak back over them as the luminous eyes of Mrs Norris came round the door. Ron and Harry stood quite still, both thinking the same thing. Did the cloak work on Cat? After what seemed an age, she turned and left. This isn't safe. She might have gone for filch. I bet she heard us. Come on. And Ron pulled Harry out of the room. The snow still hadn't melted next morning. Want to play chess, Harry? said Ron. No. Why don't we go down and visit Hagrid? No, you go. I know what you're thinking about, Harry. That mirror. Don't go back tonight. Why not? I don't know. I've just got a bad feeling about it. And anyway, you've had too many close shaves already. Filch, Snape and Mrs Norris are wandering around. So what if they can't see you? What if they walk into you? What if you knock something over? You sound like Hermione. I'm serious, Harry. Don't go. But Harry only had one thought in his head, which was to get back in front of that mirror and Ron wasn't going to stop him. That third night, he found his way more quickly than before. He was walking so fast, he knew he, wasn't make, he was making more noise than was wise, but it didn't matter anymore. And there, was his, and there were his mother and father smiling at him again. And one of his grandfathers nodded happily. Harry sank down to sit on the floor in front of the mirror. There was nothing to stop him staying here all night with his family. Nothing at all, except. So, back again, Harry. Harry felt as though his insides had turned to ice. He looked behind him. Sitting on one of the desks by the wall was none other than Albus Dumbledore. Harry must have walked straight past him, so desperate to get to the mirror, he hadn't noticed him. Uh, I didn't see you, sir. Strange how short-sighted being invisible can make you, said Dumbledore, and Harry was relieved to see that he was smiling. So, said Dumbledore, slipping off the desk to sit, to sit on the floor with Harry, you're like, hundreds of, you're like hundreds before you have discovered the delights of the mirror of Erised. I didn't know it was called that, sir, but I expect you realise by now what it does. It, well, it shows me my family. 
and it showed your friend Ron himself as head boy. How did you know? I don't need a cloak to become invisible, said Dumbledore gently. Now, can you think what the mirror of Erised shows us all? Harry shook his head. Let me explain. The happiest man on earth would be able to use the mirror of Erised like a normal mirror. That is, he would look into it and see himself exactly as he is. Does that help? Harry thought. Then he said slowly, It shows us what we want, whatever we want. Yes and no, said Dumbledore quietly. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest, most desperate desire of our heart. You, who have never known your family, see them standing around you. Ron Weasley, who has always been overshadowed by his brothers, sees himself standing alone, the best of all of them. However, this mirror will give us neither knowledge or truth. Men have wasted away before it, entranced by what they have seen, or been driven mad, not knowing if what it shows is real or even possible. The mirror will be moved to a new home tomorrow, Harry, and I ask you not to go looking for it again. If you ever do run across it, you will now be prepared. It does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Remember that. Now, why don't you put that ad admirable cloak back on and get off to bed? Harry stood up. Sir, Professor Dumbledore, can I ask you something? Obviously, you've just done so, Dumbledore smiled. You may ask me one more thing, however. What do you see when you look in the mirror? I, said Dumbledore, I see myself holding a pair of thick woolen socks. Harry stared. One can never have enough socks, said Dumbledore. Another Christmas has come and gone, and I didn't get a single pair. People will insist on giving me books. It was only when he was back in bed that it struck Harry that Dumbledore might not have been quite truthful. But then he thought, as he shoved scabbers off his pillow, it had been quite a personal question. And that's where we leave Harry at the end of chapter 12. And next time we'll be going on to chapter 13, Nicholas Flamel. Um, I hope you're enjoying the readings and I hope that you are going through your questions and answering them and in your book and enjoying doing so. So, bye for now. See you next time.